the comment starts harsh, emotional, and blunt. And that is exactly why it deserves a deep, calm, and thoughtful response rather than a reaction. When someone says sorry Ubuntu, but forcing AI down everyone's throats is bad, have fun making yourself irrelevant, Ubuntu. Businesses do not want AI on their servers, and most Linux users don't want it on their PCs. Canonical, welcome to being MSV 2.0, what they are really expressing is fear, is frustration and distrust, not just of Ubuntu, but of a broader shift happening across the entire technology landscape. This video is not about defending Ubuntu blindly, and it is not about attacking the commenter either. It is about unpacking what is actually happening, why people feel this way, where the concerns are valid, where they are misunderstood, and what the future realistically looks like for Ubuntu, Linux, businesses, and everyday users in a world where AI is becoming unavoidable. Let's start with the emotional core of the comment. The phrase forcing AI down everyone's throats immediately tells us something important. Linux users, especially longtime users, deeply value control, choice, transparency, and minimalism. Linux has always been the refuge for people who wanted to escape corporate agendas, telemetry, forced updates, and opaque systems. When Canonical talks about AI integration, assistance, smart tooling, or cloud-backed features, many users hear echoes of Windows, Microsoft, Google, and Apple. They remember how those companies gradually introduced features that could not be fully disabled, collected data by default, and shifted priorities away from power users toward monetization. Und. So when Ubuntu mentions AI, the fear isn't really about AI itself, it's about losing control over the operating system they chose precisely to avoid this kind of direction. The comparison to Microsoft is not accidental. Welcome to being MSV 2.0 is a loaded accusation. Microsoft is seen by many Linux users as the embodiment of closed systems, forced integrations, corporate dominance, and user-hostile decisions. Canonical historically positioned Ubuntu as Linux for human beings, an accessible, user-friendly distro that still respected open-source values. Over the years, however, Canonical has made controversial choices. The Amazon lens in Unity, Snap being pushed aggressively, replacing traditional packages, telemetry debates, and now AI integration. Each of these decisions, taken individually, may seem reasonable from a business perspective, but collectively they have created a narrative that Canonical is drifting away from community-first ideals toward a more corporate, top-down model. Now let's address the claim that businesses do not want AI on their servers. This statement is both true and false depending on context. Businesses absolutely want AI, but they want it on their terms. Enterprises care about predictability, security, compliance, and control. They do not want black box AI services that phone home, consume unpredictable resources, or introduce new attack surfaces without clear benefits. Many businesses are cautious about generative AI because of data leakage risks, legal uncertainties, and regulatory pressure. However, at the same time, businesses are heavily investing in AI for automation, monitoring, anomaly detection, DevOps optimization, cybersecurity, and data analysis. Oh. The issue is not AI itself, it is forced AI, poorly integrated AI, or AI that is designed primarily for marketing rather than real operational value. From this perspective, the commenter's concern is valid. If Ubuntu were to embed AI features deeply into the OS in a way that cannot be disabled, audited, or self-hosted, many enterprises would reject it immediately. Linux servers are valued for their stability and predictability. Anything that threatens that reputation is a red flag. But Canonical is also not naive. So their enterprise customers, especially in cloud, telecom, and infrastructure, would not tolerate reckless AI integration. Canonical's business depends heavily on Ubuntu Server, Ubuntu Pro, and long-term support contracts. Alienating those customers would be catastrophic. So while marketing headlines may make it sound like AI everywhere, the reality on servers is likely to be far more conservative, modular, and optional. Now let's talk about the second major claim. Most Linux users don't want AI on their PCs. This is a sentiment that resonates strongly within the Linux community. Linux desktop users are often power users, developers, sysadmins, privacy advocates, and tinkerers. Many of them already use AI tools, but they prefer them as optional applications, command line tools, or local models that they control. 
They don't want a system-level assistant constantly running, suggesting things, collecting usage patterns, or integrating with proprietary services. They want the OS to get out of the way and let them work. But here is the uncomfortable truth. The Linux desktop market has always struggled with adoption beyond enthusiasts. Canonical's mission has long been to make Linux accessible to a broader audience. Yes. That broader audience, whether we like it or not, increasingly expects smart features. They are used to search that understands intent, settings that can be queried in natural language, tools that assist rather than require memorization. Ignoring AI entirely could make Ubuntu feel outdated to new users, especially as Windows, Mac OS, and even Chrome OS move aggressively in this direction. Canonical is trying to walk a tightrope between not alienating existing users and not becoming irrelevant to future ones. This is where the accusation of forcing becomes critical. AI as an option is one thing. AI as a default, unavoidable presence is another. The Linux community has always accepted choice. If Canonical offers AI features that can be completely disabled, removed, or replaced, much of the backlash would disappear. The fear is that AI will become intertwined with core system functions, making Ubuntu less modular and more opinionated in ways that clash with Linux philosophy. Whether Canonical understands this distinction deeply enough remains to be seen. Now let's address the idea that Ubuntu will make itself irrelevant. Ironically, Ubuntu's biggest risk is not AI, but fragmentation and loss of trust. Ubuntu is no longer the only user-friendly Linux distro. Fedora, Linux Mint, Pop, Underscore OS, and Devereaux, and others have matured significantly. Many users who feel alienated by Canonical's decisions already have alternatives that align better with their values. If Canonical missteps with AI, the exodus would not be hypothetical, it would be immediate. Linux users vote with their feet. You've seen it before with Unity, Snap Backlash, and telemetry debates. At the same time, Ubuntu's relevance is not limited to desktop users. In cloud infrastructure, Ubuntu is dominant. It powers a massive portion of AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud workloads. It is deeply embedded in containers, Kubernetes, CICD pipelines, and DevOps workflows. That relevance is not going away overnight. Even if some desktop users leave, Ubuntu as a platform remains deeply entrenched in modern computing. The question is not whether Ubuntu will disappear, but what kind of Ubuntu will exist in five or ten years? The Microsoft comparison deserves deeper analysis. Microsoft itself has changed dramatically. Today's Microsoft is one of the largest contributors to open source, a major Linux supporter, and a key player in cloud-native infrastructure. Yet, it is also aggressively pushing AI into every product, sometimes in ways users resent. Canonical risks inheriting not just Microsoft's success, but also its backlash. The lesson from Microsoft is not AI is bad, but users hate feeling manipulated, tracked, or ignored. If Canonical repeats those mistakes, the MSV 2.0 label will stick, fairly or not. Another overlooked aspect is the difference between AI as a buzzword and AI as tooling. Many Linux users already rely on automation, scripts, and smart tooling that would technically fall under the umbrella of AI or machine learning. Predictive package resolution, smart scheduling, adaptive power management, and intelligent diagnostics are all forms of AI when marketed. The backlash often comes not from the functionality, but from branding and implementation. When AI is framed as an assistant watching you, users recoil. When it is framed as a tool you explicitly invoke, users are far more accepting. This brings us to the philosophical core of the debate. Linux has always been about empowerment through understanding. You learn commands, configure files, and shape the system to your will. AI, especially generative AI, shifts power from understanding to delegation. You ask, it answers. For some, this feels like progress. For others, it feels like erosion of skill and agency. This tension is not unique to Ubuntu. It is happening across programming, system administration, and IT as a whole. The Ubuntu controversy is simply a focal point for a much larger cultural shift. So where does this leave us? At the commenter is not wrong to be worried. Blindly integrating AI without respecting user autonomy would be a betrayal of Linux principles. Businesses will reject anything that threatens stability and compliance. Power users will abandon anything that removes control. Canonical must be extremely careful, but declaring Ubuntu irrelevant is premature. Ubuntu's future depends on execution, not intention. 
Optional, transparent, self-hostable AI tools could enhance productivity without compromising values. Forced, opaque, cloud-dependent AI would be disastrous. In the end, this is not a battle between AI and Linux. It is a battle between choice and coercion. Linux has always thrived on choice. If Ubuntu remembers that, it can evolve without losing its soul. If it forgets, the community will move on, as it always has. But the commenter's anger is a warning signal, not a verdict. Canonical would be wise to listen, not dismiss it. Because the Linux community may be small compared to mainstream platforms, but it has a long memory and a very low tolerance for betrayal. This video is not saying AI is evil, nor is it saying Ubuntu is doomed. It's a saying that trust, once lost, is incredibly hard to regain. Ubuntu stands at a crossroads. One path leads to broader adoption at the cost of alienating its core. The other leads to slower growth but deeper loyalty. History shows that Linux survives not because of marketing trends, but because of respect for its users. Whether Canonical remembers that will determine whether this comment becomes a footnote or a prophecy.